Hi, I'm Tim with Shades of Green Nursery and Landscape, and it's Easter Sunday 2021. We're closed today, so I finally had time to finish getting in our summer vegetable garden. Typically, you want to plant your warm weather crops two weeks after our last frost date. And here in Collin County, that's either March 15th or March 17th, depending on what calendar you're looking at. But assume it's March 17th, add 14 days, that gets you to the end of March, 1st of April. So the first weekend of April is always when I try to plant my warm weather crops. This would be your eggplant, your squash, your cucumbers, melons, tomatoes, peppers, all those things that want to uh, have the warmer temperatures before they start bearing fruit. So this year in this bed, uh, we got some leeks that were planted last fall. Uh, lots of watermelon in this bed. I wanna rotate my crops. Last year I had eggplant and peppers in this bed. This year I'm putting something completely different in this bed. Uh, I have a little bit of garlic that came back from last year over here. Two rows of carrots. These were planted last fall. Still waiting for them to pop up above the ground, show me their shoulders before we pull them out. Blackberries going nuts this year. And we have this little dwarf peach tree right over here in its second year. I hope to get some fruit off of it this time. Uh, I've already got tons of berries showing up. Now on this bed, I did make this bed more acidic. I used a lot of peat moss and a pine mulch and I used an acidic fertilizer to uh, give the blueberries, excuse me, the blackberries and the peaches the nutrients they need. They like acidic soil. So this soil is different from what's in all the other beds. Let's head on down here. Our taller raised bed this year, we've got eggplant. I've got some zucchini, which I'm gonna to try to put up on a steak. Lots of peppers, and then a few onions that were left over for my bunch when I planted them down here in the onion bed. And over here, these are our potatoes. Now, I'll put the link below to the video we did about potatoes, uh, planting those. Put these in the ground about six weeks ago, maybe a little bit more, and they're doing fantastic. And for those of you that have asked, this is viola. I always like to have a, a living root in the ground, some kind of plant in the ground all year long. And so this year in my potato bed, I use violas as a cover crop. We get a little shade back here in the winter. Violas did fantastic. They filled this whole bed. I pulled half of them out so I could plant the potatoes and they are just looking fantastic. Now that they're this tall, I fertilized them again and I should start seeing some flowers coming up very, very soon. This is my bulb bed. I fertilize it with bone meal because it's high in phosphorus, which is what bulbs need. Got a half of it in garlic, half of it in two different varieties of onions. Down here, in this bed, I use pansies as a cover crop, simply because I like the color, and I wanted to find out, do I have any rabbits back here? They love pansies, and by having the pansies in the ground all winter long and not losing any, I know I don't have any rabbits back here, which is a good sign. Also, I've got some uh, cucumbers that I'm gonna put up on this trellis. I've got another tomato in the middle that's gonna go up the trellis. And I've got two zucchini at the back that I'm also going to try to trellis this year. And here along the front are my tomatoes, which I'm going to use a string method this year. I'll put a link below to the blog where I learned how to do this. I've never done this before, but we're gonna see how it works. Uh, the plan is that you're gonna prune your tomatoes way more than you normally would and send them up the string using these little plastic clips to hold on to the tomato as it grows. If it all goes well, you get a much higher yield of tomatoes without all the bushy mess that can sometimes happen if you just let them go and do whatever they want. I've never had much success with cages. They bend over, uh, they fall over. Sometimes the tomatoes get too heavy and they, they snap and bend over the edge of the cage. So this year, we'll see how this works. We'll be Post, uh, posting a lot of these videos so you can find out how it's going along. Oh, and also for those of you who watched our companion planting video a while back, I've interplanted marigolds amongst all my tomatoes and I've got some alyssum to draw the bees in uh, to help pollinate everything. As soon as it gets warm, pansies don't like the hot weather. That's why they're such a wonderful winter flower. They'll bloom with snow and ice on the ground, but the heat of May is going to kill these things. And when that happens, I will twist them at the top, leave the roots in the ground. Anytime I'm planting a vegetable garden, I don't want to just rip the whole plant out of the ground unless it's diseased, because the roots of these pansies are very nutrient dense, and I want all those nutrients to be released back into my soil to feed the soil. I just want to get rid of this part. When I pull these pansies out, I'll put some basil 
uh, in their place because basil will appreciate the shade from the taller tomatoes and I do like my pesto and it's also nice to uh, make a nice uh, Neapolitan pizza with the tomatoes and the basil. So that's my update. Uh, when I fertilize my tomato bed, I use tomato tone. In my onion and garlic bed, I use bone meal. And for everything else, I'm pretty much using just plain old garden tone. These are great products by Espoma. I've been using them for years. They're organic, they're safe. They've got the micronutrients that the plants need and just uh, excellent products all the way around. So that's what I'm using to fertilize with. I fertilize when I put them in the ground and then once the growing season starts, probably about once a month. So, I'm Tim with Shades of Green Nursery and Landscape, and this has been our Vegetable Garden Update.